Hi everyone, welcome to today's class. My name is Yip, I'll be guiding you through the sequence. This is Sophie, who will be here as a student. We are doing a yin sequence today, but for now we're gonna start laying down on our backs so you can find your way down onto the mat. And we're just gonna take a moment to arrive in the space, connect to our bodies, so if you haven't already, you can start by deepening your inhale and your exhale. And just be inquisitive of how it is that you're feeling right now. Try not to label it, so maybe you're tired or energized, happy or sad. But see if you can just let those emotions be, rather than labeling then another emotion to it, saying that, oh, it's so bad that I feel this way, or it's so good. See if you can just let it be for a moment. So we're focusing on cultivating equanimity today. And I want to remind you that yoga is so much more than just practicing postures on a piece of rubber. <laughs> Asana is only one of the eight limbs. So as much as I can, I'll guide you through uh, the sequence and uh, through cultivating equanimity, I mean. And uh, uh, I do want to invite you to, you know, step off your mat today and maybe see how you can practice yoga in your day-to-day -day life as well. So keep breathing. And just let yourself arrive here. In yin, we want to uh, hold postures for longer periods of time and when we do this uh, a few things are important try to find your appropriate depth and also stillness so appropriate depth means that you might not go as deep as your mind is telling you that it wants to go or what your first instinct is maybe you go a little bit less deep so you can make sure that you can find that stillness within postures very important that we don't fidget or wiggle to uh, in and out of the posture all the time so see if you can uh, really focus on being super still and using your breath when things get a little bit tough or when you get a bit uh, sidetracked with your thoughts, see if you can use the breath to return to the moment. Just a few more breaths here and then we'll get moving. On your inhale, hug your left knee towards your left armpit. Grab hold of it just below the knee or anywhere that feels comfortable and start to move the knee towards your armpit. Making sure that the spine is nice and flat on the floor. Maybe you want to lift up your face for a moment and start to look towards your chest and then place your head down again so the back of the neck is also nice and straight. And really hug in the knee tight. Breathing in. And on your exhale, release and let it go. Switching legs, grabbing hold of the right leg now, <laughs> sorry, and hugging towards the armpit, grabbing hold of the leg just below the knee with one or both hands. Again, making sure that the spine is nice and straight so your lower back is on the floor and really pull the knee towards you. Great, release your leg to the floor. On your inhale, hug in both knees towards the chest. You can grab hold of 
your opposite elbow or forearms or maybe you're just holding on to the legs really hugging tight still making sure that the lower back is at least moving towards the floor if it's not on the floor just yet that's okay but make sure that you're making that movement towards the floor so you're flattening the spine deep breathing so some people uh, think of equanimity as something that means that you're indifferent and equanimity is not quite that so it doesn't mean that we become indifferent towards situations or uh, things that happen to us it means that you do not get attached to either good or bad or the outcome it means that your heart is wide open yet you also accept that you can't control anything Release your legs down. And start to find your way to your all fours and then descend into a child's pose. So meet me in child's pose. The big toes touch, the knees are wide. And you just let yourself lower down towards the floor. Forehead is on the floor. I'm gonna stay up a little bit, otherwise I'm worried that you won't hear me because of the microphone and the heels are moving uh, the buttocks is moving towards the heels maybe they're not quite touching that's okay and let yourself be heavy forehead on the floor you can do a mini visualization releasing anything that you're holding on to that you don't need anymore just let it trickle out of your head into the floor. Breathing deeply here. Inhaling, expanding the back body. Exhaling, releasing, getting heavy, letting go. Inhaling, filling yourself up with fresh air and on your exhale get heavy let it go slowly start to walk your hands over towards the right so you're still in a sort of child's pose but you're moving towards the right opening the left side of your body stretching through the armpit creating space in between the rib cage breathing here and if your mind starts to wander in these types of postures that we're holding for longer periods of time don't freak out don't get upset it's all part of being human your mind creating thoughts is exactly what it's designed to do but what we're trying to do is just step behind the thoughts for a moment and not get attached to them not get uh, walk like that we don't walk away with our thoughts that we stay focused on the here and now stay present few more deep breaths here really feel the left side opening up then gently start to walk yourself back to the center taking a moment of rest here then start to walk yourself over towards the left opening up the right side of the body 
creating space in between the bones, the rib cage, opening the armpit, stretching out that whole right hand side. The palms are really connected to the floor. Start to bring your attention to those parts in your body. So for instance, really feel the connection of your hands on the floor. Really feel into the right armpit. Starting to become aware of what's going on inside of our body. Keep on breathing deeply in and out. Ideally through the nose, but if that's uncomfortable for any reason, of course, breathe through the mouth. Make sure that whatever it is that you're doing is conscious and with awareness. Gently walk yourself back to the center and rest here once more with the forehead on the mat and let yourself be heavy. Giving yourself permission to have these moments of rest. Gently coming to all fours, placing your wrists below the shoulders, the knees are below the hips, and then making your way into a downward facing dog. You can pedal out the feet here, or you can find stillness, just a few nice stretches for the backs of your legs, making sure that all 10 fingers are spread widely onto the mat, the palms are pushing into the mat, shoulders are nice and open, you can bend your knees if that means that your spine is more straight. So rather than focusing to get the heels on the floor, make sure that your spine is straight. The bum moves up towards the sky. Inhale, the right leg raises high towards the sky. Exhale, bring the knee to the nose and then gently step your foot in between your hands. Lower down the left knee and walk your left foot over towards the edge of your mat, your toes pointing over the edge of the mat, so they're on a little angle, your, your foot isn't straight. Now maybe you want to stay here today and just enjoy the posture from this place. You can place a brick and come onto the forearms, or you can lower down completely towards the floor. We're going to be here for a few minutes and remember what I said at the start, finding stillness in the posture. So that might mean that today you're up here and that's perfect, that's good, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't need to be in the posture super deep to get the benefits. I can feel the posture here too. My body's slowly opening up. So this might be a moment where resistance comes into play and the mind starts to get a bit active, wants to move out of the posture. How long are we going to be there? See if you can just step behind those thoughts. So not necessarily engage with them or saying, oh, it will be fine, don't worry. Work with your breath and invite everything that you're feeling into your being. It's okay. It can be there. We're not suppressing. We're not running away. Everything is welcomed. We're just not getting attached to it. And this is the thing for equanimity. Whether it's about good or bad, the focus is not getting attached to it. So we know that we'll have super happy days where everything seems to be perfect 
And then we are also aware that we can have bad days or we read the newspaper and we see all these horrible messages of what's going on in the world. And we acknowledge that that's reality too. However, we don't let it become part of us in the sense that we then start to feel bad. It might drive us into taking action or doing something good for the world, but we still acknowledge that not everything is within our control, so we do as much as we can without internalizing everything that we see. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so it's not being indifferent. It doesn't mean that things don't matter to you. They matter very much. Almost there. Keep breathing here for another moment. Of course, we're looking for stillness. However, if you want to move in deeper because your body is opening up, Feel free to do so, remove the brick or come onto your forearms. If you're ever in real pain, then of course also move out of the posture. Yes, we're trying to find stillness and we're looking to find the edge, but we're not here to hurt our bodies. So if in pain, we move out. Okay, wonderful. Placing your hands down back onto the mat. Remove any bricks that were there. Curl the back toes. Lift up the left knee. Walk your foot back to the center. And then gently step it back, moving into downward facing dog. Pedaling out the feet if you want to. Feeling the difference between your left and your right side at the moment. And then we inhale, we lift the left leg high towards the sky. Exhale, bring the knee to the nose and gently step it in between your hands. Lowering down the right knee towards the floor and walking over the left foot towards the edge of your mat. And when it's there, you point the toes over. And maybe your left side feels very different than your right side. So maybe here you find a different appropriate depth of where you want to move into the posture. Maybe you want to take the brick and elevate yourself a bit higher. Or again, coming onto the forearms, lowering yourself down. Wherever it is that you are, Welcome anything that arises and work with your breath to not get attached or too focused on one particular thing. So again, we're not suppressing, we're not running away. We're allowing everything that we feel to be there. So maybe there's a part in your body that feels particularly tight or sticky right now. Focus on it. Focus your breath there. Visualize it opening up maybe. Bring it ease. Surrendering to the posture. Then gently placing your palms onto the mat. Curling the right toes under, lifting up the knee 
and walking your foot back to the center. Step it back, come into down dog, pedal out the feet. And then when you're ready, the big toes touch, the knees go wide and you can come into a child's pose. If you prefer to stay in down dog, please feel free to do so. But I would advise you to give yourself permission to rest. We look for our edge, we stretch the body, we stress the muscle and the connective tissues, and then we allow for our body to rest. Deep breaths here. If the mind wanders, no worries. So every time bringing it back, becoming aware of the fact that your mind wanders is in itself the practice. Because it's that awareness that's key. Stay with it. A lot of people will find it difficult to allow themselves to rest. So as much as we enjoy the feeling, at the same time we're also resisting it because we're like, ooh, how much longer, what are we doing? Gently start to come onto all fours and lower yourself down until you're on your front body completely. We're gonna place the forearms flat onto the mat. The elbows are under the shoulders and the palms are facing down. Your 10 fingers are spread widely. Your uh, hands uh, and arms are parallel to each other, uh, each other. And your lower body is completely relaxed. So your belly button is on the mat and the rest of your body is curling upwards. So push into the elbows, into the forearms to elevate you a little bit more. And then you either look right in front of you or you look a little bit up. Don't try to crunch the neck too much or don't look up all the way to the ceiling. Just a gentle stretch here. Back bend, heart opening, posture. You're in Sphinx. Deep breathing. Pushing into the forearms, pushing into the elbows, and you're sort of Gently, as if you're pulling yourself forward so that chest really opens up. Shoulders are away from the ears. And then exhale, release yourself all the way down. You can lay onto your hands with the forehead. And let yourself be heavy. I'm just laying a little bit different again for the microphone. But you can just... Look towards the floor, forehands on your hand, forehead on your hands. And just breathing here. Really let the earth hold you. Let yourself be super heavy. releasing anything that you're holding on to. 
on your exhale. Find what isn't serving you and let it go. Oh, it sounds super simple. <laughs> I know that it can be a challenge to let go of things, thoughts, emotions and feelings. Moving back onto the forearms, placing your hands, again, the palms facing down. So we're pushing into the forearms, into the elbows, the shoulders are away from the ears, the neck is nice and relaxed. Now, either you stay here, <coughs> if that is already a lot for you, or take the hands out wide to the edges of your mat, and then start to push into the palms, straightening out the arms, coming into seal pose. Your lower body is relaxed. You can look gently upwards, but again, making sure that you don't overdo it in the neck. So don't look all the way up and get that really stuck feeling. Look a little bit more up and forward as it were. And breathe here again deeply. Heart opening posture this, because we're back bending. So the front side of the body is stretching, the spine is compressing. We're opening up. Or you're still on your forearms, same concept. Inhale. And exhale. And then gently lowering the forearms down, landing on your elbows. Take the hands down and place them under your forehead. And again, be super heavy. So there is a story, maybe some of you know it, that explains equanimity in a way that I think is really fun and easy to understand. There was once a farmer who his most important asset was his horse. And one day the horse ran away. And all the people in the village and in the town, they said, oh, you're so unlucky, the horse you had, it ran away, how unfortunate you are. And the man said, I don't know if I'm fortunate or unfortunate. My horse ran away. And then the next day, the horse came back with six other horses that followed it. And the man now owned seven horses. And everyone in the village said, oh, look how lucky you are. You now have seven horses. You're so lucky. And the farmer said, I don't know if I'm lucky or unlucky. I now just own seven horses. The next day, when his son tried to break in one of the horses, uh, tried to ride it, one of the wild horses, uh, he fell off and he broke his leg. And everyone in the village said, oh, how unlucky your son uh, broke his leg. And that's unfortunate. And the man said, I don't know if I'm fortunate or unfortunate. I just know my son broke his leg. The next day, the army came to the village and asked every young man to report to come to war. Because the son had broken his leg, he was unable to go to war. And everyone said, oh, you're so lucky you don't have to go to war. To which the man said, I don't know if my son is lucky or unlucky. I just know he doesn't have to go to war. Well, this can obviously go on for a very long time. And it's to demonstrate to you that there is sometimes an approach which we can take in which we don't get attached to lucky, unlucky, fortunate, unfortunate, good, bad, or happy. Um, 
sometimes things are what they are and it doesn't mean again that you're indifferent it just means that you don't attach yourself uh, with all this grasping and holding on to so I hope that that story gives some clarity we're gonna move back onto our all fours and f meet me in downward facing dog inhale lift up your right leg and bring the knee to the nose now move your left foot uh, right foot towards the left ankle uh, sorry <laughs> wrist as far as it goes and then start to descend so see where your leg goes naturally the reason why we do that is because that's where the natural rotation of your leg allows you to be rather than pulling our leg forward and maybe going against what your bones actually allow and like for you to do so if your hip is way up high you can place anything under there so maybe a pillow or a brick if you have one close by you can stay up here today if you want to or you can start to descend down landing on forearms or coming all the way down sleeping swan a forward folding position in which we can surrender to everything that arises because in these postures it can be a lot hip opening postures can be super intense can be very emotional the body stores emotions and it tends to do that in places that are particularly dense so the hips can be a place where that can all build up lots of deeper connective tissues fascia and muscle of course around there so if things are arising for you right now use your breath you got this not good not bad just is very good finding stillness and of course moving in deeper if the body starts to open up gently placing the hands in front of you on the mat pushing into the palms slowly walking yourself back up curling the back toes <laughs> curling the toes of the left foot under lifting up your hips and then stepping back into your down dog pedaling out feeling the difference between left and right inhale lift up your left leg high towards the sky exhale bring the knee to nose and again move your left foot towards the right wrist but see where it lands naturally and then you start to lower down so not for everyone that will mean that your left leg will be parallel to the front edge of the mat it might mean that your foot is a lot closer towards the right hip that's all okay if your hip is way up high place something under that left hip and then you can decide whether you're gonna stay here or you can start to walk forward and down landing on forearms or all the way down to the floor possible as well maybe leaning with forehead on top of hands and be inquisitive in where it is that you're feeding this in your body because yes the hips but are there other places that are 
bringing sensations right now. Tune into that. Start to feel into the sensations. So that's also a good way if the mind starts to wander to really take your attention into the body. Keep on breathing. We're almost there. If it's a lot, remember that saying, this too shall pass. So it's not forever that we're in this posture, although sleeping swan can feel like an eternity. For some people, it's amazing and they love it. Other people, they dread it and they're like, nope, don't like it. But again, see if you can be like the farmer. Not good, not bad, just is. Almost there. And then when you're ready, placing palms on the mat, slowly walking yourself back up, Curling the toes of the right foot under, lifting up your knee, moving the hips towards the sky and then stepping into your down dog. Great. Pedaling out the feet. And when you're ready, come and meet me on a seated posture on your mat. We're going to take both legs out wide. You can elevate your seat so you can sit maybe on a brick if that helps you keep the spine a little bit more straight. Maybe walk your hips back a little bit, move the flesh of your bum out of the way. The toes are pointing upwards, the legs are straight. Oh, I'm just going to move off the brick here. And then we're going to move forward so you can see if you can maybe use something like a brick, for instance, that you can hold out in front of you so that it feels as if you're holding on to something. So you place the brick and then you uh, tip it over. So you're not necessarily pushing and pulling, but it can help you to give you a little bit of that feeling like you're not just floating in the sky. If you don't have a brick or you don't want to use that, of course you can place the hands in front of you and just let the back curl. If for whatever reason the legs feel very uncomfortable, you can bend the knee, you can even place the brick below the knee. You don't have to have them straight. If that's painful for you, and then you can just fold over like this. Really feeling the space also between the shoulder blades open up. So you're really getting heavy. The neck is stretching. Spine is rounding. And this is another good posture where we just let gravity do its thing. So we're just breathing here, surrendering to this posture. Taking your attention inwards. Forward folding postures have that 
characteristic where we naturally are more able to draw the attention inwards. And that can mean that the mind starts to wander way more, or it's an opportunity for you to really tune in. When you're ready, gently find your way back up all the way to straight spine. Move the legs towards each other. You can place the hands behind you and just open the chest for a moment. Push yourself up towards the sky. Look up. Let your neck drop. The head drop, sorry. And then releasing, coming back. We're going to take our right foot and step it over the left. And we're going to bend the knee. Now maybe this is enough for you. Or if you want to, start to bend your left leg as well. And both legs are bent. The heels of the uh, are moving towards your hips. Spine is nice and straight. Maybe if the knees are very far apart from each other, place something in between so they can rest. We're going to take a brick if you have one close by or just your fists and we're going to let ourselves fold over so you can place the uh, brick on your knee like so. Let your hands drop to either sides of the body or if you want to you can use your fists and just rest on the fists and maybe you say hey. I don't want to fold over at all because I get a lot of sensations from this already. And then you just keep the spine straight. You can close your eyes. And just rest like that. Really good at finding the stillness. Almost there. Creating space in your body with your breath. I know I say the same things, but it's just a reminder to keep returning to that throughout the practice. And sometimes, you know, a teacher can give you a cue and you don't always hear it in the moment. And then when you hear it again, or even in a completely different class, or years later, you're like, oh, that's what the cue meant. That's okay. <laughs> Gently coming up, placing your hands behind you, and then straightening out the left leg, stepping the right leg back, back sorry, and just wiggling out, shaking out. Nice. Right leg, left leg goes over the right leg, bending the knee. And again, maybe you keep your right leg straight. You don't have to come uh, full shoelace, but you can then also bend your right leg. So the left knee is now on top. You're sitting on both sit bones. Spine is nice and straight. And see where you want to move for this side. So maybe taking the brick again or using fists. And rounding over, letting your hands be heavy and fold to the side. If your knee is up very high, you can place a brick in between it or maybe a pillow.
Where are you feeling this inside of your body right now? Track it down. Because it's probably in more than just one place. What is it that you're feeling? Almost there. Gently coming back up, placing the hand behind you, straightening out the right leg, stepping back the left leg, and just paddle out, wiggle the feet and the legs, shake it out. Nice. When you're ready, make your way laying down onto your back. Straightening out the legs. Uh, sorry, bending, uh, bending the knees. I was removing the microphone, <laughs> sorry for that. Bending the knees and then just windshield wiping, dropping your knees towards the left, looking over towards the right. Inhale back to the center and dropping them towards the other side. And do this a few times at your own pace. You can drop the knees on the exhale and on the inhale, bringing them back to the center. Exhale, dropping them. Inhale to the center. And when you're ready, you can come to the final posture. So making a few more movements and then coming back to the center. Palms are facing up, straightening out the legs. Toes are touching. And then on your exhale, release, let them go. Maybe you want to walk the shoulder blades towards one another a little bit. Lift up your neck, look towards your chest, and then place your head down so the neck is nice and straight. Palms are facing upwards. Relax the skin around your eyes and between the eyebrows. Relax your forehead and your jaw and let your tongue drop to the back of your mouth. Let your shoulders and arms be heavy. Relax your chest and your abdomen and relax your legs and feet. We'll be in Shavasana for a little moment after which we'll move into a short meditation. If you're watching the recording and you wanna rest in Shavasana for a bit longer, Please feel free to hit pause and just stay there for as long as you need today. Really releasing any effort and letting it all go now.
gently start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, take your hands above your head for a big stretch. Waking up the body, welcoming yourself back into this moment in the here and now. Hugging your knees towards your chest and rolling onto the right hand side. Wonderful. When you're ready, find your way to a comfortably seated position. This can be easy cross-legged. You can sit on top of your legs. You can sit onto a brick or a pillow. If the eyes closed for you only works distracting, then you can find one point in your space to focus your attention on. Ideally something below uh, the horizontal level, so looking more towards the floor. Or alternatively, you are closing your eyes, getting ready for the meditation. You can have your hands resting on top of your legs with the palms facing either upwards or downwards. The spine is nice and straight. And for a few rounds, focus on your inhale and your exhale. So deepening the breath, really pulling it all the way into the body, expanding the lower belly on your inhale and contracting by pulling the belly button towards the spine on your exhale. Keep breathing. And start to become aware of everything that is happening inside and outside of you. So welcoming any sound that you might hear. Really listen to all the different sounds. So maybe you can hear something close by and when you deepen listening you can hear something further away. Feeling the sensations of your sits bones connecting to whatever it is that you're sitting on. Your chest rising on your inhale and really becoming really mindful about everything. Visualize as if your thoughts are a waterfall and rather than going along with the stream or getting swallowed by the current, you're sitting behind this waterfall and the thoughts are just flowing past you, not getting attached to them. Thoughts are very much like waves and sometimes they can swallow us or pull us in all sorts of directions. And we can't change the waves, of course, but we can learn how to surf or ride the wave. And at one point you will be able to step behind the waves and just observe them.
So see if you can do that right now. Gently start to deepen your inhale and your exhale. If you want to rub your hands over your legs or touch each finger with your thumb, coming back into this moment, back into the body, back into the now. If you want to roll your shoulders a few times. And when you're ready, you can take the hands to the heart center. Bow your head towards the heart. And find a compliment to give yourself. Anything that you can think of can be small, big, whatever it is, but make it genuine. And then you can release the hands down and gently start to open your eyes. I want to thank you so much for joining us today in this practice. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day or evening and we hope to see you again soon. Much love. Bye.